Welcome to Galfrey Pirate Radio. Um, I am one of your two hosts this evening, or day, depending on when you watch this, uh, Davy Beauchamp. And this is Angela Pritchett. Yes. And today we are going to discuss um, Voyage of the Damned and also talk a little bit some Doctor Who news and stuff like that that's been going on and some of our upcoming appearances uh, for um, some cons we're going to be at um, later uh, next month, February. Well, this one might come out in February. Is this the February? This, this will be next week, so that's it'll February. be last week in January. No. Yeah. This, the oh, Wednesday will be the first. first. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, the beginning of the week is January. Yes, so it's this is our February-January episode. Um, so Voyage of the Damned. I, I know, you, you absolutely love this episode. I liked it so much I made a costume of it. So, how, I mean, why do you, why does this, why do you like this episode so much? I like it. It's one of the few episodes where the doctor actually, Astrid asks him to take her with them, and he actually likes this, okay. I mean, it's one of those few things where he's found someone that could actually be like, you know, I want to see the stars some more, and he's like, okay, hop in the TARDIS. Yeah, we see where that got her. Yeah, it got her dead. Yeah. But, uh, spoilers. Um, um. <laughs> okay, this is what, this is from 2007? I know, if you haven't seen it yet, then yeah, but. Um, I mean, I mean, what else about, I mean, it just can't it's be that. like, I, the whole thing, it was a nice Christmas special, and I think it's hilarious that every time at Christmas, <laughs> London evacuates now, because the aliens are going to attack them at Christmas well, from the last two Christmases. <laughs> Well, actually, we don't know that. We don't know what happened to the last two Christmases. Yeah, the two previous Christmas specials. Nah. Yeah, because when they, when they come down... Last... No, that that was the last Tenet Christmas special. Yeah. But for the two Smith episodes, they no, didn't... No, this isn't Smith. We're talking Tenet, because Voyage of the yes. Game is Tenet. Yes, but you're saying that every... No, I'm saying every... that. I'm saying yeah. that then. I'm saying that for that episode in context this episode. That's what you asked me. Yeah, I know, but I'm just saying... But I think it's funny that London evacuates, England evacuates for Christmas and because, yeah. I think one of my favorite moments is having uh, Wolf, Wolf, Wolf in the episode. And, I, and at that point, I don't know if he was actually Wolf or not, because they don't name him. And I don't know if they had a, a plan to actually make that him, but I think it's great that, you know, that's a precursor to what came next. Oh, no. But, um, that episode, oh. But I also think it was awesome how the Queen stayed in. Buckingham Palace. Oh, yeah. And I love her corgis. Oh, I love corgis. Um, anything else about the episode? I mean, you said you did a costume. Well, I, mean, I, what did, costume a did, I did Astrid Perth's costume. I like Kylie Minogue as a companion. She would have been awesome. Well, I mean, you do know that from time to time they have gone back and taken actresses from previous episodes to turn them into companions. Yeah, but she died. No, no, I mean, like, the, the actress oh. as a different character. I mean, it's happened, I mean... She, she has a big music career in, in Australia, so I don't think she really, you know... I don't know, there was some really good chemistry there. It, it was cool, but that was between her and Tennant. I don't know if it would it would work for Smith and Kylie Minogue. Uh, that's true. Um, but I wonder if... But we, it would work great for me and Matt Smith, if BBC's watching. Only if I get to come tag along. Uh-huh. <laughs> What? I can tag along? Maybe. Hey, I, have a, I, have a, I have a free place to stay over there now. I didn't say England. I said in the TARDIS. Oh no, I'm sorry. I, I'm coming <laughs> along. One way or but, another. But so, I mean, it would, it would have been cool to see her as a continuing companion because it was really sweet. And all the Christmas specials, really any Tenet episode that has any jerking emotion just makes me want to cry. So, do you consider her a companion? Well, she didn't ride the TARDIS. But, I mean, that, that's always the big debate. I mean, neither did... Um... She, she was, like, a sidekick for an episode. She's not really a companion. You don't think she's a companion? No. I mean, they consider her a companion if you, like, look on the wikis and stuff, but... I mean, what does BBC say about it? Do you know? I think your head? Her companion. Well, then I guess she's a companion. But, I mean, she never rode in the TARDIS. She was just on the Titanic. So what? That's a uh, very foreboding Nixon, game. Nixon rode on the TARDIS, and I don't consider him a companion. Oh, President Nixon was totally a companion. Because <laughs> I know it makes you mad. <laughs> he was not a companion at all.
You know, it's not awkward silence. Not a companion. But, okay, back to the episode. Yeah. Well, I mean, was there anything about the episode you didn't like? I thought the villain was really cheesy. The Max. Yeah, but whatever. I mean, come on. Like with his, uh, Doctor Who's known for its cheesy. I know, but he was just a little over the top. It would have been cooler. Because, I mean, those angels were awesome. They were, like, taking their hands uh, and slinging them as, like, uh, you know, I almost, stars. I almost want to say he's Davros light. Because if, you, if you, you know, the, the, I'm saying he's Davros light because I mean, mechanical body, he controls robotic aliens. Yeah. I mean, it was almost like Davies. I mean, I don't want to say he was foreshadowing what was coming, but in his mind, it wouldn't surprise me. I don't know, but I thought, I thought the angels were really cool. Like those were awesome. The... Yeah, but my one problem with the angels, they look too much like Autons. Well, I mean, I'm not saying that they weren't cool. Like how they took their little halos and they used them as weapons. Yeah, but I'll say, I, I thought what was really cheesy was the the um, doctor flying with the two of them up to the Yeah, that bridge. was cheesy. And then when, uh, like, Astrid and the other people would fall into, like, the... It, it was so badly green screened. Yeah. It was horrible, but it was laughable. Well, I mean, I awesome. mean, at the time, they still didn't have the money they have now. Yeah. Because you could really still, tell yeah. how much money they're putting into the show now. I mean, I think just shooting high def has just helped all the way around. So I don't think it would have helped those falling scenes, even if it wasn't high def. Well, yeah, I mean, it, I mean, there is definitely a different look and feel to the show from the Davies era versus the Moffat era. And it was cool to see the Doctor in a tux. Of course. That was cool. I mean, I look amazing in a tux. I love wearing tuxes, but so I never get the chance. Tenet. I mean, yeah. Right. Yeah. He still had yeah. his converse. Yes, he did. And I, I always wear my chucks no matter um, what I'm wearing. I always wear the chucks. David Tennant and tucks. Because when I was best man at a wedding in England, I had my chucks on. That was the one thing I would not, uh, I would not concede to. I had to have my chucks. Um, How'd you feel about the, the, the rich guy surviving? You know, the real jerk. Oh, he should have died. <laughs> I think it? he should have died, or um, I can't remember the little red dude's name. Adam, Animana. Yeah, Pia. Yeah, no, Animana Pia? <laughs> no. But I think he, I liked him. I knew mean, his little I cyborg think, dude. I think I he think, was awesome. I mean, I just think they were they were going for that sort of bittersweetness. Yeah, I think that the rich dude should have died. But I, th but I, I mean, it was really, if you look at it, a really depressing episode because everybody that deserved to yeah. live died. It was very died, was a very didn't. They're very good at, for, at foreshadowing very depressing Christmas episodes because the next one, oh, I cry so many tears at that next Christmas episode. So Which was the next one? The Master? Isn't that the Tenet's last one? It's the next one, right? That, no, that was, um, no, they, the, the last Christmas one. I think was the next doctor, but oh no, you're right. The one with Tenet is, and the Masters, the next one with um, Pierce Bronson in it, or whatever his name was, the the James Bond. <laughs> I can't remember right now. Timothy Dalton. Timothy Dalton, thank you. Yeah, one was I got, I got aired some. on Christmas. I think the other one was aired on uh, New Year's. It still makes me cry. Oh my so God. much. I can't believe you insulted That's Pierce Brosnan like that. Look, I, I thought it was James Bond, okay? It's a newer um, James Bond. It's not Sean Connery, and it's not Roger Moore, okay? Or George Lazenby. It's not Sean Connery, and it's not Roger Moore, okay? <laughs> or Daniel Craig. It's not Sean Connery, and it's not Roger Moore, so um, I don't always remember. Well, I didn't, yeah, Daniel Craig's pretty hot, but... Really? Yeah. How? Very hot. It looks like someone worked over his face with a baseball bat. No, 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 no. Big buff British guy is awesome. I'm seriously getting depressed here all of a sudden. Um, okay, uh, my favorite part of the entire Christmas special, since I haven't said what I really liked about it, was, um, and we're going to get to this, actually this is going to be a plug for um, Misty Cod, is um, Time Crash. I thought that was a brilliant sort of add-on to the Christmas special because it features my favorite doctor, um, Peter Davidson. And I almost forgot his name. I did not forget his name. <laughs> um, but, but 
we're going to be discussing that episode actually at Mysticon on a full-fledged panel uh, and that's going to be happening the last weekend of February. Um, we're going to be the sort of opening act to the uh, opening ceremonies. Um, and honestly, I, there isn't too much I don't like about the episode. Um, cause, I mean, I think you hit on a lot of what I had issues with. Um, I was really hoping that, you know, somewhere in there that Davies would have referred back to the guy that he left on Earth with the credit card of Infinite Fortune, basically. Um, but that never really ever happened that I could recall. Um, I could be wrong about that. I, would, I did find it funny how the one dude was like, I know all this stuff about Earth yeah. and Earth knowledge and that Christmas is this cannibalistic holiday. Yeah. Where it was so funny. Yeah, it, it had some great moments um, like that. Um, anything else you want to say about the uh, Christmas special before I, we get into is, some like this news? This is one of the ones I like. I like most of the Christmas specials though. Like I'm always excited. Like everyone's like, oh, the Christmas specials are so horrible. I think even like The Office made a joke about how like bad the Christmas specials are, and I love the Christmas specials. So. They're they're hit or miss for me. Um, I like them. Even for as flawed as Rose is as an episode. I love it because... That's my least favorite Christmas episode. <laughs> I love it because it brings us back, it brings Doctor Who back. I mean, you have to acknowledge that. Yeah. Um, I think my least favorite is the first Tenant one. Because he didn't feel like he was a doctor. I mean, it was also a Doctor Light Christmas special. It just... That's the, that's the, the Ash one, right? At the end when they blow up the ship. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Sure. I mean, it had its moments, but it just, he didn't feel like the doctor in that episode. The, the, the aliens in that one were just kind of cheesy, but... I, I thought they were the best looking aliens that they had for a while. <laughs> they were cheesy, but... Um, but, you know, um, but of course, I think my favorite thus far is the, um, is the, is the latest, which we'll discuss later. Um, but let's talk about some, uh, some who news. Um, um, Big Bang Theory this week. Yeah, Big Bang um, Theory gave some Doctor Who love. It was a full scene of Doctor Who really love. That was a really funny episode, no matter what. Like, the entire episode's funny. Yeah, but it was it was nice to see um, the, the the major Who reference. Because, um, honestly, I would totally dig a girl that would watch Doctor Who as a date night thing. That's Penny, awesome. Penny's not the girl for you. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, but of course, if they're watching, te you know, they might have been watching Eccleston. They might have been watching classic. They're, they're watching Eccleston. There's a reason. She exactly, because I mean, she may, they might have been watching Tennant or Smith, because she might have changed her mind. Yeah, she saw David Tennant. She definitely changed her mind. Yeah, so I'm kind of curious. And I'm curious about this Who Con that they were referring to. I think to. that's just like Sheldon's, who con? Sheldon's way of saying he has like a little Who Con, where they you know they have all their friends and they have like the little Doctor Who nerdiness. But I hate to say it, they've now built something up. I want the payoff now. I want to see WhoCon later this year. I really do. I'm going to see them go to this WhoCon, be it at the apartment or be it, um, you know, at a real convention. I want to see, what's Sheldon, Amy? Is that Sheldon's girlfriend? Yeah, Amy for a Fallon. I, I want to see Amy dressed as Amy Pond. <laughs> that makes me think. And you know what the funny thing is? I just found out who she actually is. Uh -huh. I did not realize she was Blossom. Yeah. I had no idea. Um, and when, when they actually, you know, showed me on IMDb, I was like, oh, no way. Um, because they really plain her out for that role. Well, and even when you see interviews of her, she's, that's kind of how she just dresses yeah. up in her. She doesn't put those tacky hats yeah. on but, anymore. But the, fun, but the interesting thing is she actually has her doctorate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was just like, I was just really blown away by all this. Little things. What, what can I say? But yeah, we're way off tan tangent now. Um. Right now, they're also looking at casting, sadly enough, the new Who Companion. Um, sadly, you, you weren't in the running Aww. at this moment. Um, and I'm going to get into that in a sort of single episode later this week. But the person they actually, from what I understand, offered the role to, which I can't remember her name right now, she actually had to turn it down because of, an, of another role or another part um, that she had already committed to. Um, that she didn't realize she was going to end up getting. Um, she was a, all I remember, she was a comedian and an older comedian. And I think they were going to go sort of more of the Donna Noble-esque type route with this, with this companion. So it's really curious with the other ones um, that they've shown, which I'll get into later on, on a little mini episode. Um, 
the blonde that they had in there, um, I forget, what, I, I can't remember everybody's names right now, I have no notes, or no iPad to look this stuff up. She had this great alien looking um, face, I mean... No, I mean, she, she kind of... a horrible way no. to talk about it. You have a great alien-looking no. face. She looked like Nyssa from Classic Who, or she also looked like the um, the Siren from the Pirate episode. She had this very, you know, mysterious, alien, human-looking face. Um, I don't think that's a compliment. <laughs> it's totally a compliment, because, I mean, it would have... It would be great to see him not have a, an Earth companion again who then is exposed to Earth quite a bit and trying to fit in with the customs. Or there was an, another actress that released it out to me, um, and she's played some, it looks like Victorian type roles. It'd be nice to see doctor, the doctor take a companion out of another time period to travel with. They get their reaction. I think there's some really great storytelling there, and I, I just think it's time to move away from the modern companion, my own personal preference. What would you like to see out of the next companion? Stormageddon. <laughs> <laughs> that, that would be awesome if he's like a little teenager or something. Yeah, I mean, I, that would be great. But I mean, you it's would right you, <laughs> you would still need a a female companion. Yeah, in there. They, that's sort of the big corner. Watchers. I don't know. I mean, a lot of guys watch it for the Doctor. Right. None of them watch it for Amy Pond and her short skirts. Which, what really disturbs me about Amy Pond and her short skirts? Don't even go to the toy thing right now. I'm going to the toy thing right now. You brought it off. What's the, what's the name of the actual name of those toys, though? I think they're called micro figures. Okay. Well, I happened to uh, one of the one of the comic shops this is, locally. This is what Davy does when he gets toys. Take note. Okay. That is not Proceed. what I do. Proceed. But I noticed with the micro figure today that. Oh, well, I'm not gonna say Keep it now. Going. No, I'm done. Keep going. No, I'm done. Okay, so Davy decides to inform me to look under the do and under the toy skirt of Amy Pond, and she has no underwear on. Which explains in Time Crash, or not Time Crash, Time and Space, why Rory screwed up the TARDIS. Because it seems Amy Pond wears no underwear. Yes. But this is what Davy, Davy does when he gets new toys. I, I do he not. He checks underneath Amy Pond's skirt to make sure she has underwear on. Thank you for making me look like a total pervert of some sort. You're welcome. <laughs> okay, next, Doctor Who News. I, 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 I'm, I'm done. I have nothing okay, else. Okay, well, I'm going to talk about some really cool things because I got an awesome package in the mail from Zero Bryant who makes the really cool Doctor Who t-shirts. He did the stare-off shirt. But here's one of them. Um, he did this one. He did this one. And he did one that says Whovian on it. And there's actually one on T Fury today, January 27th, which doesn't really help you guys out there. Hopefully you saw it. And it's kind of an old, like, Looney Tune style. That's um, all, folks. It's That's all, folks style thing. Well, he sent me this awesome print because he doesn't just do shirts, he does prints. Yeah, so I would love for him to do a shirt of just the Fifth Doctor. <laughs> but he sent me this cool print, so check this out. Yeah. It's like a standard like 16 by 20 size and it's got the stare off and he has a couple of them up on his web page. If you look on our Facebook page and look under the pages that we like, you can find Zero Brian on there. Yeah. But it's really cool. It's printed on really, really nice paper and it's, everything. It, it feels like real poster paper and not right. the cheap, cheap stuff that you get at Walmart. So, and it's just like, it's just really cool looking. Yeah. And so I'm totally getting a, a frame for this to put up in the background of the show. Yeah. But I haven't had a chance to go to Hobby Lobby and get a frame for it yet. But I just wanted to show everyone this because it's really cool. I got this package and I was like, holy cow. Yes. So, so Zero Bryant on Facebook or on like, I guess what's Reddit. The, Reddit or yeah. um, what's the other one? The shirt thing. The, the Threadless or whatever? Yeah, Threadless. Threadless? Yeah, I mean, he does a lot of, I mean, he does a lot of shirts for all the t-shirt sites. He does like T-Fury, the R.A.T. Ripped yeah. apparel. Yeah. He has a bunch of those type of t-shirts, but he also does really cool prints. So if you're looking yeah. for like some really cool Doctor Who prints to put up in your room or whatever, there's a really cool silence one that's all cartoony that I like. Which I think is getting turned into a t-shirt. That'd be awesome. Yeah, and I, that's, I think, sometime in February, if I remember correctly, because he just posted about it uh, the past couple days. And he has the coolest shirt, like one of his older shirts is a Tyrannosaurus Rex with a fourth Doctor scarf coming out of the TARDIS. And it's called Bigger on the Inside than the Outside. Does that mean he ate the fourth Doctor, Tom I, Baker? I don't know. I really hope so. But it's the cutest shirt because I love dinosaurs and Doctor Who. So you mix them both together and there you go. So 
So, but yeah, there was my zero Bryant plug that I wanted to make sure I got him on the show. Cool. So. Yeah, even though we wear his shirts yeah, we wear all the shirts time. Yeah, we wear shirts all the time, and yeah. we just never really like say who they are. Uh, every once in a while, uh, and like in this one, I'm gonna put his uh, web information on. Um, and be, whenever we have the poster in the background, you always see his web web information in the back. Because whenever we get a sponsor or we're at a convention, I always make sure I plug them because they're gracious enough to you know add something to the show. Yeah, and it's really cool. I mean, like the the Whovian shirt is really neat too. I actually couldn't find that in my closet because yeah. I just own so many Doctor Who shirts that when I was piling through to get them all. And if you know if you're a convention or an artist that wants to show off some Doctor Who stuff. You know, contact us on the Facebook page or at Gallifrey Pirate Radio at gmail.com or on, on the website, GallifreyPirateRadio.com. You know, drop us a, drop us a line and I'll work something out because, you know, we like plugging people's stuff, especially when it's Doctor Who related, especially when it's as awesome as what Zero Brian does. Okay, and the next thing, conventions. Yes, we have two coming up in the end of February and the beginning of March. Mysticon, yeah. which is in Roanoke, Virginia. And it is February 20... I don't have... I think it's 25th. Let me look. Is this on? No. And plus, Mom will be able to log right in. No, it'll be fine. Um, yeah. So, February and 22nd, 23rd, 24th or something like that? It's, it's the last weekend of the month. So, I'll get you an exact date in a moment. But... For the opening ceremonies, it's no, no, right before opening I'm ceremonies. I'm ready to get to that. Yeah, I know, but for oh, saying that, interrupt me much. Okay, so before the opening ceremonies, yes. we will be doing a Gaffrey Pirate Radio panel. Yes. So come, if yes. you're coming to the convention, come and watch us. Yes, it'll um, be just as crazy as a Logicon a few weeks ago. No, it's gonna be not as crazy as a Logicon. It'll be just as crazy as a Logicon no. a few weeks ago. Um, everyone that on it is going to be on the panel. Uh, yeah, um, we're going to have Rich Siegfried, we're going to have, as long as everybody makes it there in time, Clayton Wick, Angela, myself, Allegra, the Chain Melchick, and Jason. Um, and there's also going to be, we're also going to have an appearance, if all works out, at what the Helicon, which is... Which I can't be at because I'm working on a movie. Which is the second weekend of February. Um, and I'll be on that panel. Uh, Allegra should be there. Uh, we'll have a new panelist, uh, Teresa Bain. Um, Maybe Jason, the, if Stormageddon no, isn't. No, that's him down, not that he, he, he he's filming. Um, and uh, Allegra, the chain mall check. We Please we should that. we should all be there. Did I? Yeah, it's Clayton. Clayton. Yeah, Clayton. Yeah, Clayton. Uh, we're gonna be there for that one if everything works out right. Um, they're still so that's what putting the hell together. In Greensboro, North Carolina, which is a free convention at Guilford College. Don't try finding the. If you can find the web page, you win a prize. I found the webpage, page. but it has the wrong date on it. Yeah, it's probably from last year. So, it's in um, 2012. But no, okay, the Mysticon dates are the 24th, 25th, and 26th yes. of February, and that's in Roanoke, Virginia. If you look it up, Mysticon, you can find it on Facebook or on Google, if you Google the Mysticon. Or if you go to our website. Yeah, if you go to the Gallifrey Pirate Radio Facebook it's page, you can find well, it. Yeah, we. I mean... We try to link back to everybody that's nice enough to let us be a part of please, their convention. Please go to the Galfrey Pirate Radio Facebook page and like us. We're almost to 100. We're almost to 100 likes. Yay! Um, and then after What the Hell Con, after Misty Con, we're going to be at StellarCon. StellarCon, which is in High Point, North Carolina, yes. which is run by actually the college we both went to. You yes. went to the University of North Carolina. You're still Greenville. going to. I'm still going to, but I've already graduated from there, too. Yes. I got my undergrad there, too. So, it's a nice little sci-fi convention. This is this 37th? No, no, 36th? it's... 35th? It's 35 or 36, it's I can't remember. 35th or 36th year happening. Yeah. And it's just a really neat yeah. little low-key convention. If you happen to be a, a UNCG um, student and you're watching this, you get in for free. Yes. So And there's also shuttle service from the college. Yes. So you should totally... It's, it's also the second oldest student-run convention in the United States. Most people don't know that. The only one that beats us out is uh, AggieCon in Texas. So, I mean, there was a, a huge heritage of sci-fi fantasy fandom in North Carolina, especially in Greensboro. And it's a really fun con. They're going to have um, John Kowalik there, uh, Mark Poole. Um, for the literary guest of honor, they have Patrick Rothfuss. Um, it's going to be phenomenal. Um, I'm also one of the guests, both as Galaxy Part Radio, but also as an author with the stuff I do writing wise. And um, I'll be there in my Clockwork Android costume and yes. my Astrid costume, and maybe another one, depends on if I have time. Yeah. Not the Weeping Angel yet, because it's not done. Yeah. And um, 
and if all goes as planned, we will be, um, we're going to have most of our regulars on, on the show, most likely with Teresa. The one we might be missing will be Clayton because he's actually uh, assistant con manager this year because he's going to be running SillerCon next year. Um, trying to think of anything else we need to Not plug. Not anything since we haven't really confirmed any other conventions. What, um... At least within the next few months. Yeah, next few months. I mean, we will be making appearances at RavenCon. Um, we'll also be making appearances at Con Carolinas. Uh, you know, we'll be popping up all over Most the place. Most of these conventions are in the Virginia, North Carolina area. Yeah. We um, have to be specific about Yeah, we'll, we'll also make appearances at DragonCon. At least I will. Um, I'll be there. What you talking about? Yeah, but I mean on panels and stuff. I will be on panels, but I'll be walking around in costumes. So um, and come up and say hi to me. There's also a few other cons that I'm hoping to get us at. Oh, MobyCon. Uh, I will be at MobyCon. I might be at MobyCon, depending um, on if I have to film for a movie that weekend. And actually, I'll be filming my first documentary there, but that's off the point. Um, but I think that pretty much covers everything you want to say in this episode. Yeah, I think so. This is, yeah, this is, this is I think, a, a, a really solid episode for us. So go to, our, go to our Facebook page, type in Galfrey Pirate Radio on Facebook, and like us, and go to our YouTube channel, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. But like us on Facebook. Yes, please like us on Facebook. Yes. So I'm not just like t making posts on Facebook for the, the air. Yeah, and strangely enough, we, we're actually getting viewership all over the country now. I mean, all over, oh, all over the world is what I'm trying to say. You know, we have viewership in Australia. We have some in Russia, Saudi Arabia. I mean, we're, we're getting hits all over the place. Though right now, our, our three biggest places are U.S., Canada, and England. Um, but, and hopefully if I get everything set up right, we might be Skyping in with some people over in England and getting some British viewpoints on some of these episodes, especially yeah. with the new season coming up, which is building to what I'm excited about, the 50th Yay, anniversary, because Mafia keeps saying that it might be longer than your standard 13 or 14 episode season. Um, so very, very excited. Yes. yes. So I think that's everything. Yeah, that's everything. Okay. This is, uh, Galfrey Private Radio, uh, signing off.